Now, the election of a Labour government means a range of new policies and priorities in Westminster. Yeah, and we've heard from some of the politicians this morning, but what about the campaigners? People who have been pushing the Conservative government to make changes now have a Labour Party in charge. What does it mean for the future of those campaigns and, and how they try and maybe change the political weather? Absolutely. Well, three people who are in exactly that position are Fegan Murray, Mina Naram and Kwejo Twinaboa, and they all join us now. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us on the sofa. Vegan, perhaps if I could start with you. Um, of course, people will know you, Martin Hett's uh, mother. He was, of course, killed in the Manchester Arena bombing. You have spent the last seven years campaigning to get the law changed. How difficult is it when you've been working with one government to have to switch to a new one, bearing in mind you've made those connections, you've had those mm -hmm. conversations? Well, actually, obviously, I've met many politicians from the Conservative Party over the years, and uh, it's been very, very slow. Um, you know, as you said, it's been a long, many years. Um, but I am hopeful that with the new government, there's going to be a different pace to what I'm trying to do. And actually, you've already had contact with Sir Keir Starmer, haven't yes, you? Yes, so I had meetings with uh, Sir Keir Starmer, and Yvette Cooper and other uh, ministers from the Labour Party. and. Um, the, the, the feeling I had from these meetings is the word that keeps coming to mind is integrity. I felt there was integrity in what both Keir Starmer and Yvette Cooper told me. Um, and I, I, without trying to sound naive, I do believe that actually change will now happen quickly in terms of Martin's law. Um, and obviously, you know, as you know, I did the walk, the 200 mile walk to meet Rishi Sunak. and. Um, a lot of the other victims from other terrorist attacks came and joined me on the walk. They are all working with me also on the victims' charter. And Keir Starmer wrote to me recently, uh, just before, I mean, the week while, while he was still campaigning, he somehow managed to find time to get a letter to me, promising me both politically and personally that he's pledging to get Martin's Law done and thanked me for the letter about the survivors' charter. So I feel positive about it and I feel that whilst he hasn't promised I feel it's a very very positive step forward. Do you think we might see it in in the King's speech then in in a week or two's time? I really hope so I, I'm, I'm trying to stay positive I, I think we will I'd be I'd be very surprised if we don't. Mira you lost your son on, on a smart motorway didn't you and you've been campaigning for changes in the way smart motorways operate how does the change of government, do you think, affect your campaign? It's really, really difficult. And I have been so involved in campaigning and um, pushing for changes. Um, I've also um, proposed Dev's Law, as you know as well, which is part of the campaign. Um, there's so much that's been done and that's so much in the pipeline that's been that's paused over the past year. And it's been really, really difficult to understand what Labour actually want from my side from my point of view, it's been very, very quiet. Um, and I can only hope and be optimistic that they actually want to make a change and put safety at the absolute focus of decisions going forward. So as a campaigner, do you feel like you've got to kind of start all over again now, having <laughs> new conversations with new people and new, new relationships like that? Yes and no. I think there are relationships that have been established already um, and some really, really good work has been done. I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, but in terms of the new Secretary of State for new ministers, yes, absolutely, that has to be done from scratch. And one thing that I think that would be really, really important, and I would really ask the Secretary of State for Transport, is to call for a round table and bring key stakeholders all together at once and hear our pleas all in one go. And I think that would be a much quicker way to understand what, what we need. Yeah, I suppose part of the challenge is, that, you know, all those new members of the cabinet are dealing with all kinds of issues and challenges and everybody wants to meet them it's like how do you fight through how do you get their ear and and, and make your presence felt you just have to keep going and i think something we've all discussed in, in the back room was you have to keep fighting you have to keep going it's the same message you have to be consistent and you just have to build those relationships again we've seen cabinets changing over the last few years and this is nothing new um, but in That's terms true. of our message that remains the same yeah, despite yeah. whoever sits on the other side a lot side. of change even in the last few years haven't we yeah, yeah. Quajo, social housing um, yes. is your issue a very personal reason behind your campaign 
Yeah, um, definitely we need more social housing. I mean, it's the heart of this uh, current housing crisis and it's been an area that has been neglected for generations and by consecutive governments. Rachel Reeves and Keir Starmer uh, speak about and quite regularly delivering economic prosperity, but the biggest barrier is the current housing crisis. And the answer to that is building more quality social homes. We know we have 145,000 homeless kids, 1.3 million waiting to get into um, social housing. We know it impacts the NHS, but also a child's education. They have to be delivering more social housing, but also looking at what's going on in the private rented sector, affordability, section 21, um, no fault evictions, the quality, the fact that one in four uh, private homes don't meet the decent home standard, but also we have the leasehold st uh, scandal at the moment. We know there has to be a bottom-up approach to tackling this crisis, but to deliver econo economic prosperity in this country, they have to now tackle this housing crisis that has been growing for generations. There is a lot in the new government's uh, inbox, mm -hmm. but certainly housing has been talked about um, in these first few days. So have you been encouraged by what you've heard? I've been encouraged by the shift in conversation over the last few days because during the campaign it was very much about home ownership. That is not where the current crisis is. Um, the current crisis is again within social housing with homelessness figures, record levels of homelessness and in the private rented sector too. But I also want to take this opportunity to call on the government to introduce Grenfell Law. Um, it's more than seven years ago, 72 innocent individuals um, lost their lives in, 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 in Grenfell and politicians lined the streets day, in the days after promising change, promising reform. As of yet, we have a community still reeling and the changes that the previous government promised they would introduce, they haven't and it's a national shame. I'm now looking towards this Labour government to deliver that through Grenfell Law because there are people that are going to go to sleep tonight in buildings that are still wrapped in cladding thinking if they are going to be next. And at the heart of this law has to be the asks of the Grenfell community. They have been kicked into the long grass. It is a national shame. We were promised more would be done, yet I am out here seven years on campaigning and, 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 and demonstrating to the country that people are still complaining of similar things that the community, Grenfell community, had been complaining to prior to the fire. They have been failed and it's not good enough and now it's for the Labour government to deliver. Housing's a really good example, isn't it? Because we've, we've spoken to the new Chief Secretary to the Treasury in the new Cabinet this morning, Darren Jones, and he's talking about building more homes. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge challenge and a massive deal. But that's only one part of housing. Mm -hmm. There's the existing stock, mm -hmm. there's homelessness, there's mm -hmm. safety, everything. I mean, it's the, 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 all the things they have to deal with, it's so complicated and so interconnected. It is, but they have to take a bottom-up approach, and this is what I've said. There is no top-down approach, and this focus on home ownership, it hasn't worked for the last 40 years. It's not going to work for the next five. If they are serious, there are ways to tackle this crisis, but people deserve a safe, stable and affordable place to live. People in social housing and the private rented sector do not have that and they want this government to deliver that for them. Mira, what's your next stage of your campaign now that you've got a new government, you've got new politicians to deal with? Um, where do you go from here? So road deaths cost the economy almost £43 billion. Pounds. It's a huge amount. Every day we lose five people on our roads and nearly 30,000 people are killed or seriously injured. It's a huge devastating loss and that's not even counting the immeasurable loss to each family. We need to tackle this head on and there are four things, four priorities that I would put towards the government right now. And these have been put together by the Parliamentary Advisory Council for Transport and supported by over 100 organisations including myself graduated driving licences, that support for younger drivers and additional training, a road safety strategic framework, something that I have proposed back in 2019, which is based on healthcare models which have been successful in reducing injury and, and promoting safety and risk, a road safety investigation branch, which will look at road deaths and casualty and prevent any um, tragedies in the future, and also looking at um, the general safety regulations, which if implemented in its whole, could save the economy nearly £7 billion. So these are really, really big costs and we need to start focusing on reducing road deaths 
because we can then start transferring that into where we actually need to our beloved NHS and schools around the country. This is a huge gap that I feel like we've completely missed and road deaths are just seen as, oh, I'm sorry, you know, your son died in an accident. It's a preventable tragedy that we can absolutely start intervening with these small measures and changing people's lives. We've, we've talked about automated vehicles, we've talked about self-driving vehicles and connected vehicles. That's 10 to 20 years down the line. We've done the right thing with the bill, using the word safety consistently. And I have proposed that throughout to say, look, we need a focus. But right now, without these safety regulations in our vehicles, we are not leading as a country in terms of safety standards, despite being the ones that led the research decade, years and years ago. We are now falling really, really far behind in terms of global position. And that's such a shame because we really need to start focusing on safety, Every single human being deserves to leave their home and reach their destination safely. So you can, do you ever watch the politics and the cabinet and all their new jobs and stuff and think, I wish I was in there as a politician, <laughs> that you'd like to be part of that rather than campaigning from the outside? Yeah. Actually, no, I, I wouldn't want to be a politician for love nor money. However, do you know what? I've, I've, I'm now on, on Prime Minister number four, Home Secretary number five, I think, and Security Minister number seven. I think it's time that the legislation happens. Um, I think people, the general public, don't know that they're actually not safe when they're out and about. And I feel that everybody who enjoys what this country offers in terms of freedom and, and all the stuff people do to, to go and entertain themselves and live their life, um, I want people to know that they have the right to come home at night, after a night out, after a trip out. And, and there's, there's no law to keep them safe. And, and that is absolutely common sense. And um, no, I don't want to be a politician. I just want the politicians to implement it and, and implement the basic thing that that keeps us safe uh, and, and any, uh, any government, it doesn't matter who it is, one of the top priorities of any government has to be to keep the citizens of this country safe, mm. whether that's the roads or housing or security, it doesn't really matter, it, it's top priority um, and, and it's the same with, you know, unfortunately terrorist attacks are going to continue to happen. Uh, we've been lucky in the last few years, we've had over 40 near misses, but sooner or later ne the next attack will happen. Okay. And, and again, there is no law to keep people, you know, have, there's no basic bill of rights when a terrorist attack happens. And again, an attack isn't an attack against individuals, it's an attack against the state. So the government has an obligation to, to provide those basic rights for people when the worst happens. We have to leave it there, I'm afraid, for now. But you'll all be watching. We'll be watching. Let's see what the next few months and years bring. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.